Good evening, City Council, Mayor, City Clerk, City Attorney. This review uh, is all to do with the many departments that we have and the hard work and dedication. Next. So when we look at this, uh, at this slide, we talk about our prior state and we talk about the four areas. Uh, of our, that are our main categories. So when we look at the four roads, we talk about our 200 plus miles. We talk, uh, talk about our infrastructure being our third category. And we talk about the age and the value of these assets and how, how important they are. Many of them are 50 to 60 years old, like our city hall here, which, was a, which is presently, I believe, 103 years old. We talk about our number two um, our fleet, and that's we, we've addressed that, at least started to with our enterprise program, which I believe the mayor is very happy with his vehicle. Our number one and most valuable is our actual our employees, and that's something that we're, we're starting to address as, as we move forward. Next. So when we talk about prior state um, and how we've led to the following issues. So over, the, over time in my position, we talk about communication, we talk about permissions, we talk about approvals, we talk about documentation, our inefficient processes of the past, and our cultural issues and how we're going to improve those. Next. So part of that is we focus on our, our core values. We talk about our, our service, our teamwork, our accountability, our innovation, our respect, our stewardship and fiscal responsibility, these are our stairs and our core values in assisting us. We lead every day with these steps to improve our daily service. Next. So as we look at our core values and we focus on these, we, they drive the city's mission and, uh, and steer toward the city's vision. How do we get there? These provide us support and strategic plan to focus on areas and goals that the city and the council uh, have determined that are very important to us. Next. We focus to improve and innovate the services provided by, uh, to our residents, daily review of how can we do better. Next. We ensure tighter fiscal and, and process controls Many projects to, to assist in this are happening throughout our, our, throughout our, our, uh, our days. Next. We focus on creating the gold standard of operations, as you've heard me talk about as I've been in this position. We are on this, and this is a journey that we'll continue to work on. Next. We make the city of Sheboygan the employer of choice. For our, for our employees and our team members. Not just wages and insurance, but the full process and environment that we work in daily. Next. So when we talk about our strategic plan, which is underway presently, we talk about our mission and how, where we wanna be. Next. Our strategic plan has, continues to focus on our city's vision, where the city of Sheboygan will be a family-oriented and prosperous community with a wide variety of housing, business, cultural, and recreational opportunities in a safe and attractive neighborhoods, which we continue to do with the assistance of our, our departments and our city council. Our strategic plan, which we've extended um, through 2022, which is underway, the creation of our 2023 strategic plan currently in process, we're looking at our core values, our mission and vision to make sure that we're on target. Next. So as we do that in a 2021 quarterly, um, third quarter three and four um, update for the council, we continue to streamline our processes, manage, manage cleanup efforts, strengthen financial controls, establish policies and procedures um, that we've noted that are either missing or inadequate um, per our 2020 and 2021 CLA studies. We continue to find discrepancies and address infractions as the council has has been identified. So, so impressed with our finance team um, and the work they've done. I, it's just amazing what we've we've been able to address as we continue to get get started. Next. So, long-term investment uh, fund review and updated completed in our July 2021. 
Next. Our continued creation of the city's first five-year fiscal um, strategic plan with Ehlers as Phil kind of started to review the TIDs with us. This helps us to be responsible and strategic moving forward. Again, first time ever done. Next. Our GROTA appraisals and reevaluation phases, uh, phase one is completed last year. Of the five phases, we're in phase two this year in 2022. This is not an area that we should be hiding from and allowing to fall behind. So as you heard me state last year, uh, this, this was actually um, out of compliance since 2018. Next. Actively managing accounts receivables, notably delinquent personal property uh, tax penalty payments in 2021, uh, $4,000. Uh, 2021 actual was 37700 Just amazing when we see that. Exceeding budgeted revenues by 942%. Again, these are great things happening within the city. What more can we say on this other than great job? Next. Neighborly, we have to talk about neighborly. This was Jessica's project and she did a fantastic job. But neighborly loans program and applications, prior state of in-person only applications, five to seven annually, annually. Again, this is to help our, our, our constituents as a last, last line of support. Since July 2021, online applications, 40 to 50, annually, 714% increase. It is so unbelievable that we are able to help our constituents day in and day out with their needs, 714%. This was a huge undertaking on top of the daily responsibilities, decades of problems cleaned up. As you can see, our service is now up 714%. Great job. Next one, employee life insurance re reconciliation and retiree in health insurance audit completed. First comprehensive reviews ever in the city's history. 12 in, in, uh, ineligible, excuse me, participants removed from the plan. Just years of negligence that we finally got cleaned up. Next. This one's an easy one if, if, you, get my, if you get my line. Uh, AT&T phone lines consolidation audit completed. 36 unused lines uh, can canceled, uh, creating $9,000 in annual savings. Something so simple, but overlooked. Again, asking why do we need what we have, right? Next. So continued improvements in 2021 in our quarters three and four. So we talk about our um, Munis chart of accounts con uh, conversion. Next, parking stall and rentals and billing um, moved to Munis, again, off of AS400, one of those old programs that we're trying to work off of. The inaugural Citizens Fire Academy, I have to put a, a plug in there for our, our fire department. Uh, first one, and they did a great job. They actually, um, quite a few of our uh, City Hall staff, myself included, um, Alder uh, Lester was in there also. We realized how hard it is to be a fireman um, or, you know, on, a, on, on call. It's, a, it's just amazing. Uh, next. MyCivic, electronic community information and engagement platform nearing completion. This is to assist our, our citizen communications and technology, our program to take us into the future. Next. Our IBMI AS400 migration, 40% of the data reduction. Again, we've continued to really make some huge strides in this. 40% is a huge, huge opportunity because this um, homemade program has been used for so many decades that it, it just takes time to get this information off. So as uh, Eric knows, my, my goal for his department is, in 2022 is another 40%. Yeah, I know he's cringing back there. So next. So as we look at our policy creation updates, long-term investments, 
our fund balance, our TIF, as you, as you heard about it, our code of ethics. Continued growth and development on this is continuing. Next. Enterprise fleet management, a million savings in geo debt for five-year program. Again, this is a huge opportunity for us in taking care of our, our smaller fleet um, part, parcels. So this is a great program. So, uh, it's a slow rollout, be, mainly due to uh, supply chain, but we have been getting vehicles out to our, our departments, DPW, um, and just getting the old equipment off and the new equipment on, so it looks really great. Next. EAM software implementation was finally approved uh, recently, as we know. So we just, just had our kickoff, um, and I'm, it's going to take two years, but you're going to hear us talking about it on a regular basis, and it's going to be great. It's very exciting. It's going to allow the council and our teams to really be strategic and understand the lifespan and need for prioritizing throughout the city, not just roads and sidewalks, but facilities and, and so forth. So it's great. Next. So we talk about 2017 to 2021 strategic plan extended through 2022 creation of the 2023 to 2027 strategic plan. Obviously that's, that's in process and moving forward and it's, it's showing some great information. Group sessions were completed. Surveys are still going great. We're about two and a half times what we had back in 2017 as far as constituent input. That's huge, two and a half times the amount of feedback. Now it's a, it's a start, hopefully it'll continue to keep rolling. Next. Ambulance rates, uh, first update in 13 years. Again, these are things that we just don't tend to look at or haven't looked at. And again, they're all mandated, so it's bumping things up to where they should be. So the new rates and new co uh, collections uh, group is working with us. So that'll help us with our, um, the revenues in that area. Next. Munis code enforcement and permitting initiation. Better processes and better controls so that we can help our constituents to make sure that we have the community and neighborhoods that we want. Next. Investments in employees, 2021. Uh, quarters three and four. We'll talk about that a little bit. So Carlson Detman review, as I'm sure all of the council members and, and department heads are very concerned. Where are we with that, Todd? So we're finishing this up very detailed and in-depth, and we're continuing to have to really do the deeper dive because we're not looking at just other municipalities, but we're also looking at our neighbors on different jobs that are actually uh, comparable to what we what we do within our city, but a lot of our jobs are actually very refined and very detailed And it's not like you can just go and take somebody from Sargento or take somebody from a, a Kohler It's it's actually you have to take somebody from another municipality So it's very difficult. We also have to realize that the city is a city So that means that you can't just go to a village or to a township and say that they have the same positions literally have to look at somebody that's going to have to relocate to, to fill some of these positions. We also realize that a lot of our positions are actually exactly on scale of where they should be. So that's a great opportunity for us to help us understand where we are. Next. Biometric screen, um, health screening uh, reinstated. It was paused back in 2019. We care to help our team um, help themselves. Biometrics helps us understand possible opportunities for each of us to understand when we take this. Next. Initiated mandatory employment practices, liability training, sessions for all staff. Again, training helps us help ourselves and others as we continue to be the employer of choice. Next. Increased training and professional development in 2022 budget, we increased it by $40,000. Again, we were kind of stepped back a little bit back in 2020 because of COVID, but we really need to make sure that we give our employees and our team members the time and the, the ability to get the training that they need to help take us to that next, that next level. So training helps, helps us help each other raise the bar as we move forward. Next. Wellness Committee uh, revamped 
rebranded, renamed, however we want to look at that. We, we're now the Wellbeing Committee, and we also continue to use our Go365 for those that are on our insurance program. Again, it's helping our employees to understand how they're, how they're doing and help themselves to be healthier. So reviewing how we can excite and involve as many team members to help us in being well -be with our well-being. Next. All right, HSA contribution for 2022 that was included in uh, this year's budget. And it, again, it's not guaranteed, but uh, you know, if it works, if we can work and, and stay, stay healthy, um, that keeps the rates down, this is something that we should be providing our employees as an incentive. Next. So investment in employees, 2021. Again, initiated the internal journeys uh, to, to supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging within our workplace culture, providing clarity and understanding relating, related to appreciating our valued experiences, our varied experiences, backgrounds, and cultures. Had our first all staff training session, creating and sustaining authentic relationships in the workplace. Again, we're starting our journey of educating and learning to become an employer of choice and belonging. Next. Looking forward into 2022, every time we tear a leaf off the calendar, you present a new place for new ideas and progress by Charles Ketting. Next. Perfect. All right. So our strategic plan, we're in the define. Uh, we, we completed the, the define portion of it. Uh, we did that in the beginning of uh, 2022. Baker Tilly is a collaborative member and it's the city's first time professionally done. Next. We're in process of the discover uh, piece and that's engaging our internal and external stakeholders. We had nine external focus groups, uh, many of which were quite, quite commutative, where they gave us a lot of information, some a little bit more difficult than others. Then we'll be creating our SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Next. From there, we'll develop um, and review our mission and vision and core values, making sure that they're in, um, representative of what, we, what information we've we pull together from our constituents and uh, from our, our department heads. So we'll review that, identify and prioritize strategic goals, create a strategy map, prepare de uh, deployment uh, um, to move out. Next. The deploy, uh, that's basically where we develop and change management program, assign accountabilities, completion milestones, and we'll work with our department heads to make sure that we can develop key performance uh, indicators and targets. We'll, be, we'll make sure that we can measure it, monitor it, and report it, and make sure that we make adjustments accordingly, or as I call it, course corrections as we go. Next. Looking forward to 2022. I'm sure you're all excited about what's coming. So the new year, new strategies. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection by Mark Twain. So as we look at our in, uh, investments in employees in 2022, we're continuing our internal journey, supporting diversity, equity, and inclusion, and belonging. Again, we're building our, pl our plan and program, and we'll talk about that um, when we have our HR presentation in the future. Learning skills to support critical conversations and civility, creating sy synergies, and sharing resources with community partners. Again, we're working with our community to help us become better together. Moving forward, Munis uh, Human Capital Management Module expansion, majority, the majority of it has been unused, untouched, untapped for 15 years. It's just unbelievable when you think about the modules that we have that we haven't used. Next. We talk about Munis Project Ledger and Capital Assets Module implementation owned for 15 years and not used. Again, Caitlin um, basically is working on this as many with, again, with many other projects and her team. This is going to allow us to have compliance with state and federal reporting. Again, instead of having to pull things from different areas, um, we're actually going to be able to upload it 
in one report, complete and accurate. Next. Munis General Ledger Fund, consolidation, redesign. Again, this was Caitlin's uh, huge project that she has with her team going on as we speak. Um, so this is going to be, it's gonna go from 1,081 cost centers down to 60. Just think about that. If you had to go through 181, now we're only gonna have 60 categories. Then you look at 6,000, 143 accounts reduced to 557. Again, it's just unbelievable how complicated we were and how disjointed we are and how clean it's gonna be and how easy. It's a huge redesign, it's still in process. Uh, the team members are reviewing to make sure that all of the consolidation is working. It's being worked on in our training environment and it's gonna be rolled out very soon. Next. Munis upgrade uh, to version uh, 21, uh, 2021, technically point three now, I heard about that this morning. Uh, second upgrade in one year, keeping ERP uh, system and technology up to date. This is tremendous information because it affects everybody and just the understanding that we are now updating things on a regular basis is just huge. And when you think about it, how often does it happen at home or on your phone? Now we're actually doing it here at the city and it's going to continue to happen and get better. So again, starting to plan our regularly scheduled updates for our teams. Next. Munis payroll module and process enhancement, proper use of workflows and approvals. Again, this is also, this is also more connected to the HR uh, side of it and to our employees. Again, this is how we, we need to start using our, our modules that we have out there. Next. Exploration of uh, Tyler Munis payments, cashiering, electronic payments. Again, this is another module area that is just, it's huge, it affects so many departments and, it, and it's a positive um, and productive process that we're gonna be focusing on this year. Next. Munis business license module. We're in the process of doing a gap analysis. And again, these are areas that we need to continue to focus on to improve our, our opportunities. Next one is Executime, um, integrated electronic time management systems, exploration. This one actually excites me tremendously just because it's, it's going to touch all of our hourly employees and help them to be able to do what they do more efficiently and effectively. There's just so many disconnects at that level. Next. So as we look at this in 2022 moving forward, there's a few items that we'll touch on real quickly and that citywide reevaluation continues a little behind um, our, our aggressive 2021 goal, but we just were getting started. And in 2022, I've been informed that we're gonna be able to catch up and get back on schedule. Next, our financial, financial control and enha enhancements. Again, these are areas we have hired Baker Tilly, um, which is a, a great company. They're not only one part of them is doing our strategic planning, but a second part portion of them, a separate piece, is actually going to be doing our um, actual um, auditing processes in our finance department. So continuous growth and improvement. We will potentially find issues. I'm anticipating it. I know Caitlin and I are dreading it, but we know that with finding problems, it provides us to open the door to finding solutions and getting better, right? Next. DTS ViewWorks EAM Systems. Again, exciting program. It's a long project. It's gonna take you know years one and two for implementation. We're excited uh, to have this uh, for, strategic, for strategic planning. Many of our facilities are 50 plus and have problems. And you'll hear us talk about that when we reference the TID closures and opportunities. Again, it's, it's really to understand how can we understand and finance strategic problems that we need to address that have been not taken care of for decades. Next. Enterprise fleet management vehicles um, arriving, as we t I touched on before. 
This is a great project for our smaller vehicle fleets. At some point, we'll be looking at other areas for improvement in our, within our fleets on the larger vehicles. Next. Our significant infrastructure investment, inf um, investments that we've had uh, thus far, we've had fire rescue pumper truck, uh, the, a new ambulance to expand service, South Lakeshore interceptor sewer project that's coming through, our municipal wastewater treatment plant upgrades. Again, these are all great things that are happening in 2022. Next. This one is very exciting for myself and for many of our constituents and, and department heads. Um, this is the delivery of the 10 new fixed route transit buses. We're actually sending um, our lead mechanic from transit actually to the facility where they're building them. And he's going to actually be there to make sure to watch, monitor, and make sure that the, the construction and assembly of the new um, buses will be done to the standard that we need. This is going to be the first time where the city of Sheboygan's had 100% um, the highest level of new vehicles going out for our constituents. It's going to help us really to plan into the future. The next time we look at buying buses in the future, we'll be looking at the size of them and what kind of fuel. Do we want diesel? Do we want you know regular? What about battery or natural gas? Things like this, or I should say natural compressed gas, but the point is, the next level of improvement for the buses is really going to be more of how are the efficiencies of those buses into the future. Next. Housing advancement strategies. Again, this is a huge, huge area for the council and for the mayor and myself. You know, uh, creative, creative advancements in housing uh, study, the senior housing options and opportunities that we're looking to bring to, to the city. Single family housing development, as we all know, we're working diligently on that. And multifamily veterans housing, which is coming through, as we know. Again, the success of great business businesses is relying on this. We need, to, we need more housing so that we can have more great uh, constituents move and enjoy the, the gem of Sheboygan. Next. Business advancement strategies. Again, continued attention and adjustments as we work with our, our plan, our ARPA plan, but also with the grants that come in, making sure that we're, we're flexible enough to, to expand on all of that opportunity. Next. 2022 lean principles. As you, as you all know, I'm very, very huge on the, on the fact of continuous improvement, and we had Quite a few more team members. We had nine more team members uh, join us in this uh, great opportunity. And if we do the same things and we expect different um, outcomes, this is the definition of insanity, right? So what we really want to do is look at everything we do daily. How are we doing it? Why are we doing it? There's so many things that we've, we've done in the past because we've always done it. Does it add value? Does it, does it have an ROI on it? So we're doing a great job on that, and I look forward to seeing us continue that. Next. This is actually taken from one of our, from our fire station three, our headquarters, and it's the big four. And I want to give kudos uh, to that department because this is actually hanging on the wall. This is kind of their mantra, or one of them, and that's do your job. Treat people right, all, all in attitude, all out effort. Words of inspiring and motivation provided by, fire, by Sheboygan Fire Department Station 3. This is hanging on the wall. This is what they think every day when they're walking around doing their job. That's what we do as a city. Next. So this one here is kind of the iceberg is a little bit like Sheboygan, right? You see what's on top, but you don't realize what's on the bottom, and that's continuous improvement and development. So improvement initiative continued. I, des I described the design process as, I, as like the tip of an iceberg. What you don't see is in the long haul, and that's by Norman Foster. Again, many thanks and praises to the departments and team members. They are our future success as we continue to move forward with the council's assistance. 
So thank you.